prefer that you stay, but I know you better. You going with her? Whether you love or hate The Last of Us Part 2, there is no denying that it was a bit of a surprise when Naughty Dog announced that it was getting a remaster. I mean, the title is not even four years old and is already accessible on current hardware. So I'm sure that you, like me, would have thought to yourself, is this remaster really necessary? Well, stick around to the end to find out because one particular feature might just win you over. The first thing to note is that this is mostly the same experience that you would have had with the PS4 release. The same disappointing story, the same excellent gameplay, and the same jaw-dropping visuals. However, this video isn't a review, so we won't go into the details of the game itself, but rather just focus on what the remaster has brought to this title. There are a few changes that have been made for this release, as well as a couple of new inclusions. Whilst on the PlayStation Store, the game is stated to have increased texture resolution, increased level of detail distances, improved shadow quality, animation sampling rate, and much more, to be honest, the visuals seem to have barely changed. What you saw in 2020 is more or less what you will see now. Most of these differences are very subtle. Even putting footage side by side with the PS4 gameplay doesn't seem to show much of a difference, with maybe a bit of a color change at most, but that is about it. If you have noticed any any visual changes, do let me know in the comments. The remaster features new outfits for Ali and Abby, as well as other characters in the new survival mode, more on that later, as well as some lost levels. These three new levels are early development versions that were not included in the original release, and whilst they can be decent, they don't add much to the overall progression of the game. There is also developer commentary to listen to as you play through the game, which is pretty awesome if you like that sort of thing. You can also now pick up and strum a guitar whenever you wish in the new guitar free play mode. Strumming chords to your heart's content whilst attempting to bring out your inner John Mayer or Ed Sheeran may seem appealing to some, but honestly, that part of the game felt a bit tedious to me. But hey, it's there if you want it. One noticeable difference is the inclusion of the haptic feedback and adaptive trigger features. They add that extra level of immersion as you take down Infected, fight back against the WLF, and explore the game's stunning landscapes. It's a nice touch, but doesn't dramatically change the feel of the game. Also, if you don't like these features of the DualSense controller, you can always turn them off in the menu. The biggest new inclusion, and probably the main reason for this remaster, is the new No Return mode. Honestly, this new roguelike-esque game mode is really awesome, throwing you into a variety of enemy encounters and allowing you to choose your path that culminates in a final boss battle was heaps of fun. Each mission gives you a variety of rewards which allows you to upgrade your arsenal, purchase new weapons and crafting recipes, as well as unlock new characters to play as. There are also many mission types and mission modifications to unlock as well, so each new run will look vastly different to the last. One strange element of this game mode was the fact that sometimes when you would have an ally join you in the missions, they would randomly decide to walk out right in front of you and the enemies that you are hiding from. Hold up. Wait a minute. Something ain't right. Somehow, they are surprisingly invisible to your foes, so at least they aren't getting you caught in tricky situations. However, this is just a small issue in what is an extremely intense and addictive mode. I would still like to see the online multiplayer mode make a comeback, but for now, I will happily settle for no return. As a whole, it has a ton of replay value, so don't be surprised if you find yourself sinking hours into this game mode. Overall, whilst I believe that this title might have been unnecessary, The Last of Us Part 2 Remastered that does offer a variety of new features for you to enjoy, with some making more of an impact than others. The cosmetic additions are welcomed, and having the option to strum a guitar endlessly may be a bit of fun. However, I believe it will come down to whether or not you want to experience the extra DualSense features, or if you are interested in a Last of Us Part 2 themed roguelike mode that will determine whether you pick the game up or not. The new survival mode was definitely the selling point for me, but was it for you? Let me know in the comments and tell me which features you are most excited to see in this remaster.